Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today, we're going to be doing our continuing series where everybody in my live stream comes up with projections, predictions, percentages, odds, values for players and teams, and all of those sort of things. It's fun. Sub yourself up, and you can be part of the frolic. To, we are going to be grading by 1 to 100, a points value for every NHL team's number one centers. And uh, we've also put them in one from 1 to 32. So we'll be looking at every team's number one centers. That means in the comment section, they'll say, hey, Dreisaitl's not there. Well, Dreisaitl's not the number one center for the Edmonton Oilers. So that would be it. It's the number one center. For every team graded by from 1 to 100 and then put into rankings from 1 to 32. Um, this is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, www.steelflyers.com. Every team in the four major sports talked about and discussed as we are right now all the time. You're going to like it. Go check it out. Steel Flyers All Sports Network. The uh, live stream I'm talking about, right on the bottom, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show. Uh, sub yourself up here, and uh, you can be part of that show as we do things like we're about to show you right now. Let's start with the Anaheim Ducks. Anaheim Ducks, we had a, it was a question of whether it was Getzlaff or Zegers. I think you still have to give the number one center spot to Ryan Getzlock. Getting up there in age, 36 years old now. Uh, for a 36-year-old, he does pretty well, but we he got a pretty low score here. Um, he's, his, points val his points production is dropping every single year at the moment. Uh, last year, he had 42 points, or sorry, 17 points in 48 games. Not very good. I have a feeling he'll do better this year. Almost going to hit a 1,000 points for his career, which is awesome for you, Ryan. I know, Ryan, you're watching. Well, you're right. Big ups to you. I'm going to send you up my, my NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace right now to you. Pearlocopter to your door. Just for just pre, even before you even hit the 1,000. That's how confident I'm going to hit. Uh, anyways, Getzloff had a score of 40, which put him... 30th in the league as the number one center out of 32 centers. Tell me what you think, you and I'm Ducks fans. What do you think of that? Do you think that's a little unfair, or is that about right? Next, Arizona Coyotes. And uh, Nick Schmaltz is the number one center for the, for the uh, Anaheim Coyote. Uh, Probably not a number one center on any other team in the NHL, which is probably why he didn't get a very good score. 18 out of 100 he got from the community on, my, on our live stream. Um, 32 points in 52 games. Uh, the year before that, 45 points in 70 games. Those are not number one center numbers, boys and girls. Um, he's still young and probably has some upside. But overall, watching uh, Schmal or watching uh, Nick Schmaltz, I uh, I don't get anything that says number one center. He was thirty two in the league, thirty two out of thirty two, and eighteen points. Out of 100 is what he received. Uh, next, Boston Bruins. And, of course, we all know who the number one center for the uh, Boston Bruins is. Has been forever. Legend. Going to be first ballot Hall of Famer. I would be, like, choked if he wasn't a first ballot Hall of Famer. How many, how many selfies says he won? Like, three or four or something like that? Cray cray. Now, la um, last year... He got 48 points in 54 games. Not too shabby at all. Um, we gave him 85 points out of 100, though, 
which puts him number 10 as a top out of the top 32 number one centers in the league, Bergeron was number 10 at 85. Uh, I, on that, I believe I had 85 as well. I gave him 85. I don't know. I, I, I'm probably low. I'm probably low. I mean, he was almost a point of game player last year. The year before, maybe not so much. He isn't what he used to be, and that sometimes has a bias. Tell me what you think, Boston Bruins fan. Uh, do you think he's number 10? At the end of this video, by the way, I will go down every single one of them from 1 to 32. So you can listen to that at the end of the video. Next, uh, Buffalo Sabres. And we still went with Jack Eichel since officially he still is a Buffalo Sabre. And you never know. He might end up having to play in Buffalo in order for him to get traded so everybody knows he's okay and he's healthy and all of those things there. You never know. They might be able to convince him that he's oh, to stick around. I find that hard to believe, but anything's possible, I suppose. Um, we gave him an 86. I gave him a 92. There was guys who went as low as 70 for Jack Eichel out of 100. This is out of 100. 70 out of 100. Um, that's way too low. I, I think he's one of the best in the, in the league uh, when healthy, and I believe he will be healthy. He's borderline generational. And there's a lot of people that are just kind of chapped by the way he handled this situation. I think and he got a lower score. But 86 gave him a tie with Anjay Kopitar. Um, however, I put him one lower than Kopitar at number nine. So the ninth best center in the league is Jack Eichel. What do you think, Buffalo Sabres fans or other fans out there? Do you think that's fair? Number nine for the Buffalo Sabres. Next, Calgary Flames and uh, Elias Lindholm. Now, Elias Lindholm... Is probably has been named like or been called by a lot of experts as the most underrated center in the league. And that could be the case. He is very good defensively. He puts up some great numbers. I'm just not sure that he would be a number one center everywhere. I might be wrong there. Um, I like him a lot. I'm just not sure that he would be a number one center on most teams. Uh, but the community really gave him some pretty decent numbers, 75, um, which had him 21st, that's 75 out of 100, which had him 21st in the league out of 32 number one centers from every team. That Does that seem low to you, Calgary Flames fans? You think people don't know what they're talking about there? You guys see him all the time. What do you guys think? Should he be higher in the rankings than 21st out of 32 teams in number one center spot? Um, I gave a 72. I like him, but like I said, I'm not sure he'd be a number one center on a lot of teams. Uh, not There was one fellow that went as high as 93. 93 for Lindholm. So it was kind of all over the place. Somebody as low as 555. 55 out of 100? Wow, that was interesting. Uh, next, Carolina Hurricanes and Mr. Aho. Um, we had, we were kind of all over the place here. I had, I gave him a 79 out of 100. Um, that seems low for me. I think I, I yeah, it seems kind of low. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. He had... Did I do this right? Yes. He had 50 set, like a point a game last year. That's really, really good. Um, yeah, I think I might have been a little low. I could, there, we had two 90s out of 100. Uh, and an 80 and a 79 as for an average of 83, which put him 
in 12 out of 32. So just above the middle of the league for number one centers. The more I think about it, the more I think, man, I think he's undervalued here. I think even I undervalued him. All right, what do you think, Carolina fans? Chicago Blackhawks, and this one, we were like trying to figure out, is Kirby Doc the number one? We can't really say that yet, I don't think. We had a discussion about that first. But in the end, we went with Jonathan Taze. It's Kirby Doc's to lose. I believe that Kirby Doc's going to take that number one spot from Taves, but he hasn't yet. So I don't believe he has yet. Tell me what you guys think there are Chicago fans or any other fans out there. Um, and it was kind of all over the place for Jonathan Taze as well. We had a 70. Um, and I gave him a 79 out of 100. We had a 70, an 89, an 80, and a 75. The average was what I suggested it was for Jonathan Taves, 79. And I'm probably, I think he gets undervalued a lot, and I'm probably doing it. I'm uh, 60 points in 70 games the last year he played. Part of it is he was injured last year. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does in his recovery. It could go two ways. could be rusty and maybe not play that great. could be healthy and just knock it out of the park like he did two years ago where he got a point a game. Anyways, at 79, Taves was 19th out of 32 teams' number one centers. Remember... That was the number one centers in rankings from each team. Not what team, what players could be number one center on another team. Specifically the number one center on each team. Okay, next. Uh, Colorado Avalanche and McKinnon. Of course, McKinnon got a fantastic score. Uh, 95. Uh, there was nobody that was less than 92. I gave, oh, sorry, you got a 94. I gave a 95. There was a 93. But McKinnon, with 94 points out of 100, came second in voting for the number rankings of the number one centers from each team. Second, my friends. And at the end of this, you'll see, you can look at, I'll say what uh, the uh, rankings, the complete rankings for everybody was. Next. Columbus Blue Jackets and Jack Roslovich, and uh, not really what you would call a number one center on most teams. Um, he came 28th out of 32 teams with a 51 score out of 100. So, I mean, he had 34 points in 48 games last year. We might be undervaluing him. What do you think, Columbus Blue Jackets? you think that's an undervalue? Again, you'll be able to go to the end of this video to see what the rankings for everybody was and where your number, where where Jack fit in there. Uh, Dallas Stars and Tyler Sagan. Now, I think this ranking kind of went on the basis that he was injured last year, and there's a little bit. And the year before, he had uh, 50 points in 69 games, but. Um, I think it had more to do with the injuries last year than anything, but he got 71 AV, which put him at 22 out of 32 number one centers in the in the league. Um, I had 74. I gave him a 74, and I think it could be an undervalue, but it's a lot of competition out there as number one centers in the league. One injury injury year, and there's question marks to what's going to happen on your return. And I think that really goes in the minds of the people that are doing on our live stream that are making these, uh, pre not pre predictions, but uh, putting these scores up there. One, one member had it as low as 56 for Tyler Sagan. I don't really... That is super low as far as I'm concerned. But um, it was an average of 71. The high was 75. Detroit Red Wings and Larkin. And 
it's really tough to give Larkin a score as far as I'm concerned. He's had a difficult team to play with for his whole career so far. He had 73 points in 76 games, not like three years ago. But it's been kind of a slide point production-wise since then. And because of that, I believe he got the score at a, that he did at 70, which puts Larkin at number 23 out of 32 teams top number one centers, uh, which is the lower half of the league. Um, he had There was a score as low as 60 and a score as high as 80. I personally gave 71 to the Detroit Red Wings. Now, at the end of this, you can see where Dylan uh, stacks up because I'll, I'll post the whole, all every ranking for every player. Uh, Edmonton Oilers. McDavid, number one, obviously. Not much more to say than that. It, it, there was a couple of people that didn't give 100, though. He ended up with the score of 99. But McDavid all day. Dreisaitl would be the number one on most, but this is based on the number one of each specific team. Uh, Florida Panthers and Barkov. Barkov crushed it in this. Uh, he had a 95, which is actually higher than what uh, the same person gave McKinnon. He would have been the second uh, if it was up to that individual. Um, 89, 97. Somebody gave him a 97. I love Barkov. I do. Uh, point of game guy, great. Over a point of game guy, actually. Um, I personally gave Barkov a 92, and his average was a 93, which puts them number four on the list of the top rankings of the number one centers from every team. Fourth in the league, Alexander Barkov. Next, Anjay Kopitar. And, you know, forever Anjay Kopitar has been the uh, considered the most underrated player in the league. And we are probably underrating him here. Uh, he had a score of 86 um, with a high of 92 and a low of 82. I personally gave him an 84. Five, but the average was 86, which puts Kopitar at number eight in the league for number one centers uh, in the league. Out of so not bad. You can check out at the end of this video. I'll I'll tell everybody what the whole list was. Next, um, Minnesota Wild, and they've been looking for a number one center for quite some time, haven't you, Minnesota? Uh, however, Joel Erickson Eck, I believe, is the goat is the number one center now. At this moment, he's used as a number one center, probably fairly underrated. But thirty points in fifty six games does not usually give a person a very high score in these when you're competing with all thirty two number one centers. I gave him a sixty two as a number one center. I think he's more about a number more more a number two than a number one. The uh, high, somebody gave him an 80, though, for a score out of 100. Um, but the average was a 66, which put him number 25 out of 32 teams ranked number one centers. Next, Montreal Canadiens and uh, Nick Suzuki. And I think we're going to get some flack for this one. Nick Suzuki had an average of 77, which puts him 20th in the league. So below half, of, in the bottom half of the league as number one centers. I personally gave him an 80 um, because more or less his youth. I mean, I think he's going to rock it way past that eventually. But... The uh, um, average was 77, the high was 85, and somebody gave him a 68. Maybe that's a Leafs fan? I don't know. <laughs> that seems a little low. Um, but next, we have Nashville Predators and Ryan Johansson, and that wasn't pretty. Let me tell you that right 
right now. I had a 35 out of 100. The overall average, there was somebody as low as nine. They gave Ryan Johansson a nine for number one centers. Uh, Nash And the average was 32, which puts Nashville's number one center ranking at 31 out of 32 teams. Only beaten by Arizona. Next, New Jersey Devils. And we had a discussion here, and Cap Friendly puts Jack Hughes as the number one center. Okay, I still think it's Nico Heischer's to lose, and so did pretty much everybody else. We had a little poll, and we chose Nico Heischer as the number one center. Now, I totally believe Jack Jack Hughes is going to be the number one center of the future for New Jersey, but we stuck with Heischer because we go with the live stream, which you can be part of by hitting the subscribe button. And oh, I got to turn it around. The New Jersey Devils Heischer had 66, which put him uh, 25th out of 32 teams, 66 out of 100 for Nico Heischer. Great, good two-way guy. You can make a case, though, that he probably wouldn't be a number one on a lot of teams for sure. So I gave, what did I give? I gave a 62. Next, New York Islanders and Barzal. Now, I talk to New York Islanders fans quite a bit, and they rub on Barzal quite a bit. They really give him the gear, gears. They don't think he's a true number one center, and they should trade to get one. Not all of them, mind you, but quite enough. Quite, quite enough. There's a lot of people that say that. Um, we at the stream gave him a 82, which put him at 15th. Basically smack dab in the middle. Oh, sorry, 16th. All smack dab in the middle of number one centers in the league. Tell me what you think about that, Islanders fans. Do you think that's too high, too low, or fans in general? Um, next, the New York Rangers and uh, Mika Zabanejad. We were all over the place on this one. What did we have? Uh, there was somebody that gave him a score of 90 out of 100 and as low as 72. The average was 83 for Zabanajad, and that put him 13th in the league rating for number one centers. Tell me what you think of that, Rangers fans. Do that, uh, you think he should be higher than that? You you can go to the back of at the end of this video and it'll tell you what the scores for everybody was. Uh, Ottawa Senators, Joshua Norris, not quite ready yet, Joshua. Um, we had the average score of 61. It was pretty close. Everybody kind of had the same thing, which puts Norris at 26th in the league. Talking to Ottawa Senators fans, I think they're going to be kind of, they, they might be a little bit upset about that. But he is a little young. He's a little raw. Uh, I, I get it. I gave him a, what did I give him? 61. So I was a little bit below the average. Philadelphia Flyers and Sean Couturier and the panel on, the live, on, my, on our live stream loved, loved, loved Couturier. Um, the average was 87. Uh, somebody gave him a 91. Sorry, I think he was a Philadelphia Flyers fan. I think that was CL. Um, but that puts Couturier as the seventh best center, number one center in the league. Not too shabby. Next, uh, Pittsburgh Penguins and Crosby. And Crosby still gets the love, man. 95 average. I gave it 96. Uh, 95 average gives Crosby as the third best center in the league. Still at this age, at his advanced age at 34, Crosby still lighting it up. Everybody still loves him there. Uh, do you think that's right? Does anybody still think he's a better than McDavid? I know a lot of people did before, but we'll see. Uh, San Jose Sharks, Couturier. Or Couture, I should say, Couture. Couture, Logan Couture. Um, we had 
kind of all the same right around. He got a 79, which put him right above Taves, 18th in the league. Yeah, his number one centers in the league there in San Jose. Um, hey, better than most other positions for San Jose. He's one of your bright spots. I wonder if they'd ever be able to trade him if need be, if you guys did a uh, rebuild. But um, Seattle, now this was tough. You had Yanni Gord. We, went, we did go with Yanni Gord, even though he's injured. And he got a 56, which put him 27th in the league as number one centers. I think Yanni Gord can crush it this year. He's put up really good. He put up really good points in uh, in Tampa Bay. Uh, considering the fact that he was down the lineup most of the time, he had one year where he had what sixty four points in eighty two games, and then he played further down the lineup through the cup runs. But given a chance. I think he can get back to that 64-point range. But until we see it, most of us put him pretty low. Um, next, the St. Louis Blues and Ryan O'Reilly. Got to turn the page here. We had an average of 83, and they were all right around the same. I think the high was – I had 85. Um, the high was 86. Everybody kind of had the right – right around the same and that puts O'Reilly 14th in the league as number one centers and tell, tell me what you think about that St. Louis Blues fans and if you go to the end of the video I'll tell you what the rankings for everybody is um, Tampa Bay Point Point got lots of love Point got uh, 89 out of 100 ranking putting him 5th in the league as number one centers uh, he had a great playoffs last year. That probably boosted his average up quite a bit. You can see where the, he ranks by going to the end of the video and uh, see. I'll, I'll tell what everybody is. is. Toronto Maple Leafs, Matthews. This is the one that blew me away. Matthews got an 88. I had... I gave him a 97. I think he's the second best player center in the league. That's what I think. Now, I talk to Toronto fans a lot, and there are some people that love him, and some people are some people, a lot of people are very unhappy about his poor playoff performances and may put him a lot lower. What would you guys give him as a score out of 100? But overall, he was an 88, which puts him at number six, the sixth best center in the league. And if you want to see who he beats and who he doesn't, at the end of this, at the end, go to the end, and I'll, I'll put them all down there for you. Next, Vancouver Canucks and Elias Pettersson. Um, he got an 85. I gave him a 94. I freaking love Elias Pettersson. But we had guys that went as low as 70 for Pettersson. So the average, he, he ended up being number 11, the number 11, number one center in the league. Go to the end of the video to see where he ranks. Uh, Washington Capitals and Backstrom. People still got a fair amount of love for Backstrom. Uh, we were all about the same. 80, 81, 87, 83, 80. There was mostly everybody put him in that area. And the average ended up being 82, which put him pretty much on the average. 15th in the league as a number one center in the NHL. He's still putting up point a game. Like, we're probably low. I would say Nicholas Backstrom doesn't get enough love than, that he should. Even like me, I think I probably went low here. He's a point-of-game center. A lot of the guys we're giving above him are not point-of-game centers. Yeah, doesn't get much love. And I don't know why I, I tend to undervalue him. Maybe because it's because he plays with Ovechkin. So it people in subconsciously, we think that it's because of Ovechkin. But tell me what you guys think there in Washington. Uh, Vegas. Now I've talked to Vegas fans a lot and they're very disgruntled about the fact that they didn't get a number one center this year. Stevenson is not a number one center. He ended up getting 29th in the league for at, with the score of 49 out of 100. 
And that sounds about right. I I had him at even lower. I had him at 29. He's just not a number one center. On a lot of teams, he's not even a number two. So he does a good job in that role. He's he's embraced it and made the best of it. Props for that. But I don't care what you say. He's not a number one center. Finally, Winnipeg Jets and Mr. Shifley. And uh, I gave him an 88, and I was the high guy. Because he got a 79, a 77. I swear to God, is even me. He had 63 points last year in 56 games. What does this guy have to do to get love? Seriously. You know? Um, I'm positive even my 88 isn't high enough. This guy's top five in the league. And on our average, he goes to, what, 17th? Ah, oh, that just doesn't seem right to me. Winnipeg fans, give us hell. Give us lots of hell because we deserve it for that. Now, you're Winnipeg fans, if you want to see where he ranks, I'm about to say it right now. Now, the rankings from 32 to, to 1. 32, Schmoltz. 31, Johansson. 30, Getzlaff. 29, Stevenson. 28, Roslovich. 27, Gord. 26, Norris. See me there. 26, Norris. Uh, Eck, 66. Heischer, 66. Larkin, 70. Or, sorry, 26. Eck, 25. Heischer, 24, I should say. Larkin, 23. Sagan, 22. Lindholm, 21. Suzuki, 20th in the league. Taze, 19. Couture, 18. Shifley, 17. Barzal, 16. Backstrom, 15. O'Reilly, 14. Zabonajad, 13. Aho, 12. Pedersen, or Peterson, however you want to say it, 11th. Bergeron, number 10. Eichel, number 9. Kopitar, number 8. Corturier, number 7. Matthews, number six, point number five, Barkoff, number four, Crosby, number three, McKinnon, number two, and of course, McDavid, number one. Thank you for listening to this fine program, you boys and girls. Hit the sub button and we'll do, you can come on my live stream. We do, we do a lot of this Perlo dancing stuff. Yeah, buddy. And I'll send you a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace perlocopted right to your door by Hernandez and Melissa. And they will, they'll perlo dance with you too. Just ask them. They do that sort of thing. And if you keep on hitting that subscribe button, as we keep growing and growing and growing, I'm going to get myself a Jet O Frolic, I call it. That's what we're going to call it, the Jet O Frolic. And I'm going to go to all the lands that there is in the land. And we're going to go see games together. We're going to bring sacks of bacon. Just pour it out to everybody. We're going to save the world. All the bacons, by the way. It doesn't matter if you're Islamic. Isn't that beef bacon? Ostrich bacon? What other kinds of beaver bacon? Beaver bacon. Mm. Yeah. We're going to send bacon to all the world. We're going to solve all the world's problems. Hockey and bacon. It's all you need. That's my full 42, everybody. Okay, bye.